Christianity on Conservative Talk Radio. Muscular Christianity. Where we relentlessly explore the intersection of truth and politics. The trouble with our liberal friends is not that they're ignorant. It's just that they know so much that isn't so. Now, here's your host, Brian Fisher. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this free-for-all Friday edition of Focal Point on AFR Talk. I am Brian Fisher, your congenial, convivial, and amiable host. As always, we got some business we got to take care of right off the bat. Robert, are you on a mic somewhere? Yes, sir. I'm here. Okay, now here, here's the reason we have to start the program off here. I'm looking at a story, and, and remember, I brought you this story, uh, our listening audience, a couple, about a month or so ago, where if you get golfers out in the rocks, I mean, they're so far off the fairway, they're out in the rocks. Where you are most of the time. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> you, 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 you get, you're digging yourself in deeper, Rob, <laughs> so you be careful. Uh, and if you swing a titanium club out there in the rocks, you can spark and set off a fire. Right. Now, right. here's a story out of Hastings on Hudson, New York. Associated Press. Officials say fire and an explosion heavily damaged a townhouse on a suburban New York golf course. No serious injuries were reported. This was a blaze on Turnberry Drive. Uh, in Hastings, close to the St. Andrews Golf Club. Now, this happened two days ago, Rob. I didn't know you were up there. Now, Rob, I got an alibi. <laughs> I was here. I have yeah, videotaped yeah, yeah. to prove it. Jeff has an alibi. Yeah, he was here. Yeah. I will vouch for him. The one guy who does not have an alibi was you. You've been AWOL the last two days. Oh, my. You got an alibi? I got caught. I, you know, I'm sorry. I, you know, I got caught. I, I took a plane up there, played a round of golf in the snow, and then got back. Now, Rob's story is that he was at home supervising a window replacement project. Yeah, like, I'm going to believe that. So, <laughs> all right, Rob, thanks for uh, being a good sport. Appreciate that. So, now, uh, we want to – we're, we're going to have um, a guest on at 115, a Dr. Carl Benzio. He's going to talk to us about the dangers of legalizing marijuana. This is something we visited frequently here. We're seeing it happen in Colorado, Washington. Uh, Dr. Uh, Benzio is a medical doctor. He's had a lot of experience dealing with addictions. He's going to talk to us about some of the risks involved uh, in that. Now, before we jump into that, I want to read a little bit from Romans chapter 11. We've been talking. We'll finish, close the loop on this on Monday. But talking about God's plan and purpose for the Jewish people. And what Paul indicates is that God, at this time in history, has given them a spirit of stupor so they have eyes that will not see and ears that will not hear down to this very day. We're still witnessing that. And what Paul says is God's plan is as the, the gospel meets the hardness of heart of the Jewish people, it deflects off of them and goes to the Gentile world. And that was part of God's strategy and God's plan to take the gospel to uh, the Gentiles. Now he says, look, uh, to the Gentiles, he said, now there's something you need to be warned about. If their rejection, the rejection of the Jewish people, means the reconciliation of the world, in other words, he says to you and me, we have salvation because the Jews rejected it. The gospel went to them first, they rejected it, bounced off of them and came to us in the Gentile world. So if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, if the entire world has received the good news of the gospel because of their hardness of heart, because of their stupor, because they refuse to embrace the gospel, how much more will their acceptance mean life from the dead? So in other words, what Paul says, look, God is not done with the Jewish people. They have rejected the gospel now. That has meant salvation to the world. That's something to celebrate. That's something to rejoice for. If that's something to get excited about, how much more exciting will it be when the Jews are reconciled to God and to their Messiah? But then he says this is a word of warning. And the question here, we're dealing here with the issue of, of whether Paul believed once saved, always saved. Whether Paul believed in the security of the believer no matter what the believer does after conversion. That's the question. It's not whether you believe it. It's not whether I believe it. It's whether the apostle Paul uh, believed it. And that's what he talks about in this next uh, segment. Uh, and he says this, if some of the branches were broken off and you, although a wild olive shoot, were grafted in among the others and now share in the nourishing root of the olive tree. So he says, look, you're grafted in. He, he's talking to people that are grafted in 
to the trunk of the olive tree. They're grafted in. They are drawing nourishment by being grafted into the nourishing root of the olive tree. Do not be arrogant toward the branches, that is, the, that have been cut off. If you are, remember, it is not you who support the root, but the root, that is, Judaism and the traditions preserved by Judaism that supports you. So you will say, Paul says, branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. That is true. They were broken off because of their unbelief, but you stand fast through faith. So do not become proud, but stand in awe and gratitude for God's goodness uh, to you. For Listen to this. This is where you get into the question of what Paul believed about eternal security. If God did not spare the natural branches, neither will he spare you. Note then the kindness and the severity of God, severity toward those who have fallen, but God's kindness to you provided, this is the condition, provided you continue in his kindness, otherwise you too will be cut off. And even they, if they do not continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in, for God has the power to graft them in again. For if you were cut from what is by nature a wild olive tree and grafted contrary to nature into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these, the natural branches, be grafted back into their own olive tree? Uh, so he, he this is a warning to those who have been grafted into the olive tree that who are believers. He says, look, just stand firm. You are saved by grace through faith. Never stop believing. If you continue to believe, if you continue to place all of your confidence and your trust in Jesus Christ to be your Savior, Redeemer, you've got absolutely nothing to worry about. You are as secure as it is possible for a human being to be. But he says, look at the example of the Jews. Their hearts became hardened through unbelief, and they were cut off from the nourishing root of the tree. So Paul's warning to believers, don't let that happen to you. Don't allow your hearts to become hardened through unbelief. Continue to stand firm, stand right where you are, placing your faith in Jesus Christ. We are saved by faith. As long as we continue to trust Jesus Christ, we are as safe and secure as we can possibly be. Well, let's go to prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray today in Jesus' name. I pray today for my wife and my family, for the listening audience of Focal Point and AFR Talk, for all of our elected officials, for every man, woman, and child in the United States. And I pray that we will all, by the work of your Spirit, come to have a proper understanding of your purposes for the Jewish people. Remind us that they have not stumbled so as to fall beyond recovery. We thank you that because of their transgression, salvation has come to us and to all Gentiles. Their transgression and their loss has meant riches for us. And we ask you for the even greater riches their fullness and restoration will bring. I pray that through the reconciliation you have brought to us through their rejection of Christ, the Jewish people will be aroused to envy and seek acceptance that they too might be saved and brought to life. I pray that we will have a humble awareness that the branches that were broken off were broken off because of unbelief and that we stand only by faith. May we not be arrogant but afraid, realizing that if you did not spare the natural branches, neither will you spare us. Cause us to see in all this both your kindness and your severity. I pray that we will all continue in your kindness, that we may not be cut off. We pray that the Jewish people will not persist forever in their unbelief, but will come to faith and be grafted back in to their own tree. Amen. We're going to transform our culture. It's possible as each believer first lives a holy life before God. Turning from our sin each moment and remembering the Lord first in all that we do. This defines the life of a true guardian of culture. When our faith in Him is strong, we can't help but to impact our nation with the hope of the gospel. A thought from one cry, a nationwide call for spiritual awakening. I look at it this way, it's kind of like water. Steve Ensley, Executive Director of Mobile Web Guard. Water is good. The internet itself is a good thing, but it has contaminants, it has content that can do a lot of damage. That's what happens on the internet if you don't have a filter. Our filter is like a water filter. It takes out the 
contaminants and allows the good to pass, the pure to pass. The filter for mobile devices, mobilewebguard.com slash AFA. Attention all Christians who would like to become more effective in presenting and defending their beliefs. This is Alex McFarland inviting you to attend Truth for a New Generation, the conference on apologetics and evidence for the faith. TNG is coming to Spartanburg, South Carolina, September 5 and 6, live, live. in person. Hear an amazing lineup that includes Johnny Erickson Tata, Josh McDowell, David Bart.